Well, our work is all done for Saturday, and I thought, you know what? It's a nice day. I don't know what it's supposed to be like tomorrow. It's cold, you said. I don't know about it. Uh, I'll check the forecast. I want to get my videos done today. Uh, we got cowboy race, steel cowboy racing tonight, and not a whole lot else going on. So I thought today would be a, a good day, a good afternoon. I'm not doing a whole lot this afternoon. Uh, it'd be a good time to um, get the videos out of the way. So. This week, obviously, we had uh, two training sessions. I was happy with the way they went, both of them. What I was happy with today was that we saw some horses that, I don't want to use the wrong word and say they were dogging it or they just weren't doing, <laughs> they just weren't doing a good job, but they weren't, I think they had some polishing up to do and I had I had made perfect reference two weeks ago, three weeks ago about the what the hills and how March comes along and they just have this resurgence of ignorance sometimes where they just refuse to do what you want them to do. Swinging Senorita did this too when she was young. And most of the What the Hills that we have have done it from time to time when they were younger. Now, um, I'm still yellow. Mm -hmm. um, Freedom Hill was a filly that had looked good but obviously had her shortcomings. Would make breaks, wasn't paying attention. And I had it got to a point where I just said, Derek, I said, no, I, I've seen this before. Uh, we're going a different route with uh, this filly. She's going to start doing some heavy lifting. And we worked her hard for like a week, two weeks, not quite two weeks. Backed off with her. I saw that she was coming around a little bit. But the last two times she's trained, she looked phenomenal. And today she looked great. Now, she didn't win her set, but she looked fantastic today. Um, what else did I say look good today? Yeah, the usual suspects. Rose and Alexandra look good. Right. Rose Run AJ looked good. The the horses that had been good continue to look good. Nobody faltered today. Nobody that we thought was a great horse looked bad today. Who oh, oh you were worried because Jim Jim Bree made a break. And I'm not worried about Jim Bree making a break. Amy and I had talked extensively. Really, then this is what we do sometimes. Go back and look at the videos and really dissect it and try and figure out exactly what went wrong. And more times than not, we know going in and it's more of a verification, but in this case, I wanted to explain what I saw with the video with Jim Bree, and I'll go Jim Bree next week, maybe in the slow set, but the slow thing, she's not going to show the same. You can go there on Tuesday, and I guarantee you, I would bet dollars to donuts, as the old guys used to say, I will bet dollars to donuts that you will see uh, a much better, uh, a much better Jim Bree, just because she's more, she'll be more in her comfort zone. Now, um... Momentum more. He looked amazing today too. He just, I don't see a way, a path where he falls apart, where he looks bad. He just does too much, right? Yay, drinks. Go get her drinks. Uh, a little afternoon treat. A little Starbucks in the afternoon uh, because we had uh, such a long day. You know, it was such a weird day because truthfully, we weren't supposed to uh, video today. I told everybody we weren't. I told everybody except for the guy that was videoing them. So he showed up to video them. And um, as I said, had I known the camera was going to be there, I wouldn't have put Oh Hill No in or I'm Ready To. These are horses I wanted to watch to see how they were before we presented them to everybody. And uh, really, really took a leap of faith. Oh, excuse me. Really took a leap of faith with those two and both of them looked absolutely tremendous. So very happy with the way the babies are going, the way that they did their work all week long. Oh, the way that they did their It's supposed to be a vanilla cold brew. And this is not what I expected. I expected the black one with the bucket. That's a I thought I wanted the 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 cold brew. That's not a cold brew. That's how you name on it. It says cold brew. Oh, I didn't know I got this one before. I didn't know they got... Not that. bad. I didn't know they gave the coffees... Neither did I. I think they just started doing it. I think they probably had to check with the FDA that that amount of caffeine at one time wouldn't kill you. And once they cleared it, then yeah. they said, we're going to do In that. In the States, they probably didn't check. Mm. That's not your cup holder. We went over this the you other day. No, I'm right okay. here. It's more accessible. So, um, very happy with the babies. The sophomores trained this week. I was so happy because two weeks ago, Amy told me how Flashfly was quiet and she's not really, you know, she, she just seems too quiet virtually is what she was saying. And I told her when push came to shove, those fillies would show up. They just have, 
uh, for quite a while, and I just had a lot of faith in her and insider trading. And then we watched them. Uh, uh, well, I trained a flash fly rather hard in the jog cart, and then come back four days later, and Amy went with her in the bike and said she was much, much better. Or you went with her. None of us went with her in the jog cart or in the bike, did we? Okay, and she's going to go in the bike, what, Wednesday? I think we'll go Wednesday. 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 No, that won't be. Well, oh, you must work for HR or something, once do you? Once in the bike next week. Oh, yeah, for sure. Only yeah, once in the bike. Sorry. We'll go on the bike on Wednesday and then go one mile and 25 on Saturday. Just to lighten the load We're not for here them. Saturday. That's why. Okay. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> uh, so, very happy with the way the sophomores have been training. Um, really impressed with some of them. The horse that really has caught my eye kind of quietly because I expect. Flash fly. Although she wasn't a killer last year, I saw a good filly in there. Mentally, she's grown up so much. I just expect her to be decent. The one horse that, that I knew had talent, but I've been very impressed with the way he's put it all together has been Mounds for All. You never got to see him go again, did you? I didn't see him go yesterday. Yeah, he, he looked amazing the other day. I notice all these horses look god awful when I go with them, and then someone else goes with them, and they don't. Like who? But me? They get to like wear extra gear and Mm. hung up properly and when I go with them I don't care about the open bridle stuff and the horses acting up going in 25 or 30 that's just work it's just remedial stuff you know when when spring training's over and you know baseball season starts that stuff doesn't happen that much yeah. put the clothes bridle on them you know I was so impressed with uh, the one that really caught me out of the insider trading I trained her a little harder and, and she, she just felt good the other day she just training. trained. She just felt so good the other day training. I literally believe when insider trading gets to the races, she's going to wear a set of brace bandages behind and a closed bridle up front, and that is it. And I would be shocked if I was wrong. Mark my words. It is March sixteenth, two thousand and twenty-four. When she starts racing, I would be surprised if she didn't just race in brace. I'll say boots maybe, but I will. She'll definitely wear brace bandages this week. Brace bandages. Uh, Brace she bandages. She did no. last year. Nope. She, you know, she's not going to need any knee boots this year, I don't think. She's just such such a, such a nice filly. Just a treat to be around. Pull the shoes the same way. Flash fly. They've all just matured so much and turned into nice horses. And I told everybody, I don't like making predictions. I try my hardest not to. But I would be uh, shocked if pull the shoes wasn't very close in the final of the, the Mildred, whatever the hell it's called, that she's in. Um next Thursday. I think that she was good her first start. Not quite as good her second start, but I think uh, minor tweaking here and there, and uh, you know maybe a little vet work, and train her up hard. I think that Pull the Shoes is sitting on a very, very good mile next Thursday. And it, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm, I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, so the, the Green Chew Phillies all came out good, and the Green Chew Colt did too. Green Tea looked great the other day also. Uh, both <coughs> times he trained. Eric was very happy with him. We're starting to see what Kentucky's going to look like, take shape, at least the, the, the early part of Kentucky. Brace also can probably... You know what? You can school brace if you want Thursday morning. If you'd like to. Um, he's pretty well ready to go. Do they have schoolers here? Yes, they have schoolers. There's only one or two guys usually go out. Uh, this time of year, they don't have many schoolers. And any ever. Schoolers in Ontario, it's weird because in Ontario, there might be four schoolers. And when, when Ontario was really pumping, when, when there was a lot of overnight horses being raced, especially claimers, for whatever reason, there'd be 10 horses in each schooler, maybe three, four, five schoolers in Ohio. And it's not just Ohio. Pennsylvania, when I went to the Meadows, they don't even know. They might have a schooler, four horses, and really? two of them might have jog carts on. There's nobody really dancing in the schoolers. I don't know. It's just different strokes for different folks. Um... So very happy with the sophomores, very happy with the rookies. So that's good. The racehorse are good. Obviously, you see we're moving some horses out. Even when I say the babies are good, obviously, they're not perfect. I, I decided we were going to move babies at in Eve St. Kemp. I made a very good case to all my partners on those two horses. They're going to be leaving us during the sale on Monday. They already have uh, very minor bids so far, but they have bids, and, and there's no protection. So they are going to leave. Um, and as I said, the, so the sophomores also... They're not all perfect. We are going to have some horses that are leaving, uh, that are leaving the stable, and you guys know that, and even some race horses. Uh, Locatelli, one of our better horses, is in the sale for a very different reason. I am going to start polishing the stable up and 
and uh, tightening everything up so that we have the right horses in the right place at the right time. I have no interest, nor do I plan to in the future anyway, of racing two horses in the open against each other out of the stable. And one of our clients said, well, they have different owners. Who cares? I care. I don't want them racing against one another. So um, whether it be Yo Mister will float along the lower classes and it looks like money can can race in the open for now or if yo mister gets good we can move him to the meadows or kentucky or back down with stacy or anywhere the problem with that being right now anyway until may spitfire overseas is down there so i think spitfire will probably race until may the end of may maybe and the same thing we try to do with the four-year-olds uh year over year is maybe give them june and july off now with spitfire a little more over uh here's a horse that gets lathered up quite a bit he had that afib last year because yeah. he sweats so much so yeah, give him the summer off. So uh, these are all things that are going through my mind. Obviously, get the three-year-olds ready, get the two-year-olds ready, uh, but also um, continue to polish the stable up. And and I know somebody said, well, we haven't acquired many horses. We will when we have the right horses to acquire, and they will come up. As other people get their three-year-olds and their four-year-olds ready and start racing, you're going to see more horses come up for sale um, over the next few months. Now, that is food for thought. As I said in a couple of videos this week, we know now, uh, and I went back and looked last year, it was the same thing from the, la the latter part of January, virtually the first part of February, all the way till the end of March, there wasn't that many horses to acquire. So just a little mental note for next year, maybe we should have some horses that are ready to race in that time frame uh, as we head into the fall and winter plan to have horses ready for the first of February, the end of January, to be able to race them through three, four, five, six, seven horses so that we have our own horses rather than just looking to acquire horses that are not acquirable. So that's the plan. Um, also, if we're, if we're looking quite a ways down the road to 2025, that's what I want to have written in stone, that we aren't able to acquire horses from the end of January till yeah. uh, the end of March even. So have some horses ready for there. So, um, but also the sale, or this classes are frustrating. They are, but I can't. That is so what annoying. Is that? There's a UFC tonight. I might watch that. Um, it's fight night, though. It's free. Um, and as Amy just said, the classes play a huge role, but I can't plan for the classes. We can only plan. We can only look at what went last year and hope that it goes again this year. And if it isn't, if the classes deviate and they're different, then there's not much we can do about it. But we can only go with the information that we have. So this week at the track, we did well. Renegade Gypsy did a, made a very rare break. Uh, but in doing so, may have actually helped his his stable, well, not his stable mate, his teammate, so to speak, in Spitfire. Uh, the way that that race unfolded after a front runner or a horse that can take up an early position like Renegade Gypsy making a break, left it open for, for Spitfire to kind of lumber his way to the front end. What are you doing? Nothing. Oh. To, see what I'm doing. Oh, I see. Can lumber his way uh, to the front end, and he did just a hell of a mile, 153 and a three. It's hard to believe that Spitfire Overseas won the Open at Miami Valley from post nine. Now I know he won in 51 and one, but that was in the backup class. It's different, different kettle of fish, so to speak. And for him to win to the nine hole was was truly. What impressive. does the Open go for? Like 34 thousand down there. It's insane. I think only Yonkers races for more money. When you factor everything in, they, even Mohawk, they go for 32 or 34, but that's Canadian, right? That's like 28, 26, 7. Yeah. I think it's Yonkers and Miami Valley, if I'm not mistaken. The one in Kentucky is slated to go for 30. Really? Yes. Not awesome. at the Red Mile. No, not the Red Mile. How come they don't have better racing at the Red Mile? Hmm. Like for the older The problem, uh, from what I can see, is that they've really built up and protected the stake program and the breeders you know, in, in Kentucky. But it's still the, there's no money for the overnights. What did the open truck go for last year? Eight thousand or ten thousand yeah, or something? 10, yeah. It's just not a lot of money down there, and I hope that they find a way to retool that. That would be helpful for everybody down in the Kentucky area. It's one thing to get people to breed in Kentucky, but if you want people to start, other than Tony Alanya or Aki Svonsted, to start buying farms in Kentucky, they are though. Yes, but they but again, that's only for the summer racing. That's only for really for Grand Circuit and training, for the most part. If you want people to inhabit overnight racing to inhabit but I guess I might have hit I might have hit the nail right in the head right there 
maybe they're not that worried about overnight racing, right? And that's that's a problem all in itself. But the other two tracks are doing it. So Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's different. I mean, I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't know all the logistics of of what is or is not happening in Kentucky, but it would be nice to see the overnight horseman race for a little bit more. Um, so Spitfire was fantastic. Uh, Kings County got parked the whole way. Uh, but he, you know, he always comes back. He's not perfect right now. Let's say if we gauge Kings County on, uh, the Kings County we bought and, and then the other end of the scale, the Kings County that set the track record at any given time at the two places he did, he's probably at a seven and a half or an eight, um, a seven and a half or an eight right now in, in, in that regard. So he's got a lot of work to do. We may never see that Kings County again, and that's fine. He's still a good horse. He got roughed up. You know, he didn't make a break though. Mm -hmm. He did his work. He took his he took his licks and he kept coming. And I I suspect he'll come back strong next week again. So um, on his way, hopefully forward is Kings County. But two weeks ago he was a winner in fifty five and looked good. Uh, Locatelli and Yo Mister raced. Yo Mister got roughed up badly. And Locatelli not really his preferable trip taken back. So uh, and that was his last start with with us because. If he sells Monday at prefer on preferred, mm. yeah. If he sells Monday on preferred, um, uh, whoever buys him on preferred, it is a public auction and that's an added money event. So by Ontario rules, he can have his ownership changed on race night as long as Harry Poulton races the horse, which he will. So that was our last start with uh, likely with Locatelli uh, was on Monday, and I know we're gonna have people saying, ah, oh, I just don't agree. You don't you guys have to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. And I'm trying my best to do that. I'm trying my best to allow us to build a stronger stable, see what is, as I say all the time, what is working and it is not. And, and people would say, well, you know, Locatelli's always going to grind out money. Is he? You just assume that the horses are always going to grind out money and always going to be coming. We need to move Locatelli's out and move newer Locatelli's in. Is this speech really directed at me? No, yeah. but as I saw a dirty look come through your sunglasses, that was not a White Tiger dig. White Tiger uh -huh. raced good for a long time, but again, an eight-year-old trotter we've had a long time. We're on our way looking for the next White Tiger, the next Locatelli. And if that horse is in our barn now, great. And if we have to acquire that horse, great. But we need to continue to move those horses on. So I, I know there's going to be people out there that don't agree with that. And I don't want to go down this path and beat this drum again. <coughs> you guys know my position on it. And ultimately, I'm trying my best to do what's right for everybody. Now, in that speak, also trying to do what's right for everybody, I tried to win a race for my mother and father the other day. And that turned out horrible. Stepped on a wheel, made a break. Uh, he was going to be third. I thought I moved him at the right time, but looking back on it, knowing how self-conscious uh, Irish Ray is right now, because he's been beat up since he left the Maritimes, you know, racing against horses he just can't catch. And then finally getting in with some of his own the other day, I thought I was climbing over Day Plone. I was in a great spot. I moved him over. I thought by the time we got to the point where I stepped on his wheel, I'd be three lengths ahead. Mm -hmm. But when I moved him out, he just kind of hung there. And if I don't step on the wheel, I'm still third. But I have to, I guess, if we're going to play the hindsight game, rewind and say, well, what if you just stayed in the two hole to the head of the lane? Well, was he running in that bad? No, he was actually trotting great. Dave Pallone's horse was running in horribly, and that's what, another reason I moved him. I just thought it was the right move at the right time, and it wasn't. Uh, but hopefully he bounces back good. That was an okay mile from him the other day. Um, but I, obviously I felt a little bad about it after the race. But we'll see. We'll see how he does next week. Pull the Shoes, I think, is sitting on a big mile coming up. She's been so, so good, mechanically perfect. You know, leaving the gate before you to watch her on pins and needles the whole way. Now you can actually start to race her and drive her like a, like a normal horse. Leave the gate quick, sit, follow. Now just finish up strong. And I think this week, uh, under, under Tim's work, I believe you're going to see a much better uh, Pull the Shoes. And, and hopefully uh, foreshadowing what will be her the rest of her 2024 season. Hallie in the Clouds raced fantastic. The only mishap of the day, I, I ran over a wheel, so I had an excuse for making a break. James didn't. He just made one with Collector. So it's actually worse than mine. Right? Because he didn't run over a wheel or anything. He just made a break. You don't think so? I know what that feels like. What feels like? Making breaks? He big day for making breaks. Um... So, uh, Holly in the Clouds, just horrible weather, horrible weather, and she persevered and actually looked good, 28 and a piece. Obviously, there was a tailwind with that slow second quarter and the faster last quarter, but still a good mile for her. And then Collector, 
I'm interested. I want to see how he races next week. Now, he does fit the Nomers of Four Series in Miami Valley still, and I'm sure he's a, a major player in that. But as I said to James and I said to Harry, he does race for 21000 Canadian, which is what? sixteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 every single week. You can go down to Miami Valley and race for what? 17 17 30 to 40 I think, added. But if you're not a major player in that class, who cares? Uh, so next week's race for a collector will be very, very telling in that regard. There's no absolute necessity to get him to Miami Valley and at the same time we can easily take him there so it will be up to um, James and Harry to kind of steer that ship is he is he going to win the race be out of that class and move to uh, Miami Valley for a little while or is he going to be a player in that class not really uh, not really certain that he can win the non of four series so why don't we just keep him where he is and call it grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence We'll see how that plays out. So a big race coming up from Collector this week. Uh, Unbeatable Camp just raced great again. What I did find out is that my wife, like many <laughs> of you, my wife uh, just watched the, the replay of the race, uh, the last eighth of a mile of the race. Didn't even watch Kemp's full race until today when I turned it on and said, why'd you put him on the front end? Did you not say that to me? You did put him on the front. No, I came first over and cleared that's, to the front. It's not my fault that the horse on the front. No, the horse on the that front. is not putting him on the front at all. Okay, so Absolutely. why not? Because I'm attacking in the latter part of the race. I'm not did removing you end to the front. Up on the front. That was because the horse on the front sucked. That's not my fault. You're still on the front. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not the same. Uh, so Camp cleared to the front, won the race, and raced very, very good. Now, because they changed the condition, we actually have two more cracks at that race. So, uh, very, very happy with what I saw. And you know what else I found out? There's a 25,000 claiming series in uh, the Poconos coming up also. Mm -hmm. So, he theoretically could go race for Megan in the Poconos. So, very, very very happy with uh, what I saw from Unbeatable Camp. Patrick DePerona just had a flat race. I told everybody, that. Don't, don't worry about that. Every so often, he's going to. Tim scoped him, thought that his palate was a little red. I didn't feel he shut his air off anywhere in the mile when I raced him. And usually you can tell when he's agitated and he just was flat. He was just kind of dead the other day. I don't think he had a great week. Are you done there, TikTok? Oh no, my it's God. Not TikTok. It's not TikTok. <laughs> I'd be so glad when they banned that thing. <laughs> it's not TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Patrick the Piranha was a little bit flat, uh, but he'll bounce back. He always does. Mechanically, he's not running in. He's not out of gear. He's not out of steam. He just wasn't good the other day, and he always bounces back. Tech Song Soprano was the exact opposite. He was virtually bionic the other night. Uh, Scott had said the horse just jogged. He said he earplugs in. He said he raced like a monster. So um, very happy to hear that. Happy for Scott and happy for Megan. Happy for uh, for all our partners, all their partners on Tech Song Soprano. Now tonight we have Steel Cowboy. Tomorrow we have Kenobi. And then Monday we have Renegade Gypsy. And what about all, all gas, no brakes, had to race against the old mister. Here I didn't put him in at the Meadows. I didn't send him to Tim because I said I want to get him back home. We put him in the class that he was racing in the 55 to 65 claimer. It didn't fill. It's been filling every single week. It didn't fill and he, I don't think it filled. And he ended up in with Yo Mister. And the whole reason you moved Yo Mister out of the thing was so he didn't race against Locatelli. Yeah, I, I moved, I, well he fit a better class, but yeah, we moved Yo Mister out so he wouldn't have to race against Locatelli and Pemberton. And then he fit the numbers of 14,000. Harry sent me a message and said, would you rather race in the second lag of the numbers of 14? I said, Harry. You already know the answer. Put him in where he can win. Put him in where he's going to do the best. And that's where he came out. And unfortunately, all gas, no brakes, drew him with him. And then Locatelli, it is our horse, but he won't likely be our horse when he races on Monday evening. So those are the, the race horses. That's the week that was. Uh, the week that was here at the stable. Um, the three-year-olds. Who was your top horses of the week? I know you didn't have a great day, but neither did I. My top um, horses of what? Like horses that caught your eye this week. Any horse? Sure. Sure. Um, oh, geez. You put me on the spot. Yeah, I do that sometimes. There's a lot of coffee. I'm trying to remember. Who did I go with on Tuesday that I like? I can't help you out there. I don't know. What do you mean? Like babies or two-year-olds? No, year old, we three went year with older horses on Tuesday. Three-year-olds? I, I have no idea who you went with. Oh, tactical mounds. Tactical mounds. She trained great Benster yesterday, too. A lot of people asking about tactical mounds. I forgot to bring her up. She trained really good yesterday. Very good. Probably going to put her in the race bike a mile on 2.8 or 2.10 on 
well, the day I go with the horses. So that'll be either be Tuesday or Wednesday. And truthfully, that'll be driven completely by the weather. It's going to be a little, now again, mm -hmm. it changes all the time, but it's going to be a little cooler here next week. Uh, I believe starting tomorrow, as Amy said, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, uh, it will be nice to put a couple of them in the bike and just make sure we keep them moving forward towards the races. Tactical mounts. I, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but if it's, if I'm right, I'm not going to talk about it. What? That, that steak race with Texel Mail. Oh, up. yeah, don't jinx it. Yeah. <coughs> so she has a steak race coming up on uh, April 18th. Uh, we'll have her ready to go the first part of April, which we're, we're on track right now, and she looks amazing also. Um, we did take, I know I, I haven't talked to Megan, her GGT, her liver count is always high. It was high for Megan, it was high for us, it was high when she was two, it's always been high. She runs a high... Uh, a, a high GGT where she's at her best. Megan said her best GGT level uh, was at the end of the year. She had it down to 30 or 26, I think she said. I, I think that's the number she gave me. Uh, her GGT was 66 the other day, which is still well above high, but much lower. When she was racing well, I believe Megan said she was almost up in the six figure, up in the three figures, which would be 100, 120. And we, when we had sent her down to Megan, it was quite a bit higher, it was really high. So as far as her normal GGT is, it's actually on the low side of normal for her. Uh, and hopefully we can continue to get that down. What would be perfect is if we get her ready to qualify or qualifier and send her to Megan. That GGT is down. The filly is all prepped. All the vet work's done. Everything's good. Here's the horse. Have some fun. And that's that's the plan for, uh, for um, um, tactical mounds. We can deviate from that, as I said. If she wasn't training so strong and so good at Northfield, I'd be like, no, no, just get her to the Meadowlands right away. She's nice and quiet. She is. She's quiet because she doesn't have to ship, right? Yeah. You just take her out of the barn and go up to the paddock. And I think we probably will qualify her in that regard here and then just send her down to Megan in lots of time, even if we get her down there for the first or early second part, uh, second week in April. I think that should be plenty. First week of April. I don't want to cut it too close. So that's the plan for a tactical mounds. That's a plan with all the horses. Very happy with the way everything is going here so far. Uh, it can always be better. Listen, it can always be better, but it can always be worse. And um, very happy with what I've seen from the stable thus far in 2024. Uh, excited, but quietly. You know, when I look at what's, I say this all the time, I talk about what's in the burn. When I look at these two year olds that are training down, it just, it's, it's, it's very interesting because we've never had these types of horses before, right? We have, you know, maybe we ended up with a nice horse, but you never expected that many horses to be very, very good horses. And when I look at the likes of Momento Mori, right? Rose Run Alexandra, Rose Run AJ even. Mm -hmm. And then um, the way our Arrowhead was today. I know you love Arrowhead Hanover. Mm -hmm. How he was today. Green Glitter. Uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, I, listen, it's my video. I can do what I want. Um, I do want to go through some horses that have really, really, really impressed me of late. See, this thing keeps saving your password on my phone. Oh, because I worked on it. Yeah, it's, it's really screwed everything up. So when I look at, when I look at our horses, I'll just go through them alphabetically. Horses that I think very highly of right now. And I hate doing this because the ones I yeah. leave out, people will be like, why didn't you say my horse? No, no, no. The horses that have thoroughly impressed me toward to from when we bought them to March 16th, and I mean thoroughly impressed me. What video is this? This is my opening video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Atron has Arrowhead Hanover has for sure. Aunt Lily has has had her moments. Bluebird Tuxedo Hill. All the horses that have been good. Blue Ventura, Cadeau, Captain Incredible, Century. This is a dumb video. Yeah. You're right. I'm not going to do this. But there's there's the only reason is there's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. Anyway, um, I'm just very, very humbled, very, very proud of, of what the horses look like in the barn, excited to see what they're going to become, and uh, happy what they've been so far, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys had a wonderful week. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. It's sunny here, a nice Saturday here in Ohio, and I hope wherever you are, it is also. Take care.